Good morning. Good morning, Scrappers. Good morning, June Pup. Oh, belly rubs. Good morning, belly rubs. Huh? <laughs> so now, the countdown has begun. They know once I get my Mountain Dew and I get and I get my Pop Tart or whatever I get for breakfast, the last bite of that Pop Tart, that's when they start yipping. And like clockwork, as we get down to the last bit of the Pop-Tart, June moves in. She knows she always gets the last bite. Usually, Shivy's still asleep, and she misses out on the last bite. But June, never. The sound of June eating that last bit of Pop-Tart has awoken Shivy. And now they're both <laughs> sitting there waiting for me to put my shoes on. The Pop-Tart is gone. The Mountain Dew's empty. The stare down begins. Are you serious? Jesus. Show Grandma. What you got? Show Grandma what you did. Good. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. They're so proud of themselves. That's why they need to get them by the dozen. <laughs> they wear them out. There's nothing left of it. It won't even fly. So they're uh, opening the track this weekend, our local track, Marion County Raceway. Uh, their first weekend open is this weekend. They're having a test and tune Saturday. So we're not really racing this weekend and we've got this brand new carburetor from IRD and we haven't put it on the truck yet. We need to replumb the regulator because we have to run fuel to both sides of the new carburetor. See, the new carburetor has <clears throat> fuel fittings on each side, and it does not have a pass-through tunnel between the dual needle and seats, okay? The old carburetor has single in inlet on one side, and it has this pass-through tunnel internally in the bowl. So that's why we have to replumb this. Terry! Hey, Phil, what's up? What's Man, happening? That's a fancy carburetor. What do you think of that? That almost looks too nice for anything for us to have. That is super nice. Yeah. That is cool. Who's is that? IRD. Man, that is nice. John Bittler out of Florida. Really nice. Cost a pretty penny. 
It looks like it should cost a pretty penny. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to get fittings because our carburetor has a pass-through tunnel mm -hmm. and only has fittings on one side. Mm -hmm. And this one, we need to put fittings on both sides. So we brought the regulator. Where's Billy at? He disappeared on me. So we brought the regulator and we need to get uh, the fittings that go in here and a couple of 90s. That looks like a eight. I believe so. That's what it looks like. Yeah. So you need an eight to, to what? Eight to, to eight. to eight. Eight and to 90, eight. Two nineties for the driver's side. Two We're gonna run one around the back mm -hmm. and one run around the front okay. to the regulator that sits over here. Okay. And then we need a 90 and a 90 on the regulator. I don't know where Billy went. He must be hiding over there. He's right there. Oh, he's already back here in the fittings. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Terry. We'll see you next time, T-Mac. Right. We will be right here, <laughs> serving all your high performance needs. <laughs> <laughs>
after dinner, Billy and I went over to Molly's shop where her Mustang stored at. And he assured me we'd only need a couple of hours to have this thing fired up and running. And I wasn't so sure about that. Oh, good grief. A what? The plate that goes between the bell housing and the block. Do we have it? I can't find it here. I'm going to try to get rid of it with the clutch and everything. The transmission is so old. Oh, shit. Does she have an air compressor down here? No. Now, careful not to slice your hand off. Maybe we'll just take that stuff back to shop and use a wizard wheel on it to clean the gasket surfaces. So we decided to start taking inventory of all the parts and seeing what else was missing. You know, like bell housing bolts, flywheel bolts, clutch alignment tool, throw out bearing. Most of it was there, but there were a few items that we desperately need that we're not going to allow us to put the engine I down in the car tonight. The manual master on that and adapting that over and getting rid of that hydraulic uh, or that vacuum power booster. Because I'll bet you that camshaft and those high port heads aren't going to pull enough vacuum to and try to explain to her why she doesn't have brakes half the time. That's not going to be easy. We're just going to slam her together. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Remember that? Just slap it together. You said it was like an hour job. We had everything. Just slap it together. Slap it. <laughs> we had everything we could. You got your list of everything? I think so, yeah. All right, let's load up all the parts we need to take back to the shop. A clutch fork. There you go. Can I ask you a question? Working on this over here, does it make you realize how much your old man used to help you at home? It's hard, isn't it? Trying to remember all the hardware, the gaskets. Yeah. It's a lot to remember. Now do you understand why when you said let's just slap it together, why your old man would <laughs> grit his teeth a little bit? <laughs> well guys, that's gonna be about it for today. Um, uh, might start working on Tommy's engine tomorrow. It's sitting back here behind me, right here on the engine stand. Might start putting it together tomorrow. Um, depends on the weather. It's a little too wet yet to go back over there on that excavating job. So I got plenty of work to do around here. So you ready to go in and see grandma? All right, let's shut everything off. Come on, let's go shut the lights off. All right, baby. Let's go. Oh, super scrap. Oh. Well, so the Easter rush, I've got about oh. 10 dozen to make. Ten dozen? Yeah. And I don't have any time off work. Uh, you're going to be up till two in the freaking morning again. Well, I'll, I'll get through it. Oh.